The first episode of Dune Prophecy debuted tonight, and there was a hidden hand. Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. We're looking to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And to all of our new subscribers, thank you so much for coming along on this ride with us. Thank you. Thank you. Today we're talking Dune Prophecy, The Hidden Hand, episode one of the new HBO series debuted tonight. I decided to give it a check because I wanted to really see it. I've been doing other videos on the channel for Dune, but we'll be covering this show in large part on this channel. So if you love Dune, stick around. We got you covered. Right off the bat, gotta say, I enjoyed the episode. Did I love it? Did I not? Well, got into that, but I actually I enjoyed it. And I like what they were trying to do with it as well. I love that they didn't just go right into action set pieces. I know that's not necessarily what Dune is all about, but they kept it small. They kept it dialogue driven. They kept it story driven and characters as well. And they, and what you got was the plotting of what's to come. Hopefully what's to come. It's a six episode series. So you're hoping you're getting little pieces here and there and new characters introduced. And I was along for the ride from the whole way through. It was about an hour and 10 minutes, I think, with credits is around that. And for me, I never quite felt the runtime. It is, I mean, it is a little sluggish, but that's kind of what I like. So I was kind of... <laughs> In on that as well. But I like that right when it starts, you get kickstarting right with this epic war with AI, right? With the machine wars, the great machine wars, as they refer to it. And you understand that in this world, in this do now, that any basically AI is forbidden because they will take over control from the humans, right? They don't want this anymore. And it's been about 116 years or something like that as we go, or about 140, I suppose. Well, the other part is after, but you get that and you understand that, okay, we're not going to deal with this anymore. This has been banned forever. We'll never run into this issue ever once again. And that's where this story ends up taking place. And we see that the name Harkonnen were seen as cowards during this war. And this is all about Valia Harkonnen now going to the sisterhood to redeem her family name. Don't think it's going to happen. And right when she gets into the sisterhood, she is seen as... A leader. She has a lot of potential, and the Reverend Mother sees the potential within Valia Harkonnen, and they become kind of have a bond. And on her deathbed, she summons Valia to her, and and pretty much puts the sisterhood on her shoulders and says, "Basically, it's up to you to do this." And this was a cool moment. Now, so after the passing of Reverend Mother, the next in line decides, "Hey, I'm uh, I don't like the way things were operated because they were manipulating DNAs and, and things like that." She decides to right these wrongs in her opinion. And no longer have this be a factor anymore. And Valia says, ah, I don't think so. I was in line with Reverend Mother. I believe what she was going. And she told me to stay, stick with the plan. To stay through with the plan. And this is the first time we get the voice. The voice is used. And I think this is the first time in, in the history of, of the Dune-ology so far that it's been used. Because they didn't. no one seems to understand what was going on here. And she has her kill herself. She makes her kill herself. And I found an epic fashion she says take your blade take your blade and stab your throat just stick it in your throat and then she winds up dead and 30 years later we see that Valia is now the reverend mother she is the head of the sisterhood and there's a plan in place to get an empress in power so that the sisterhood will always be safe there'll always be a safety for the sisterhood and they will have power and they'll have their place in peace so basically what this is is they're going to get the emperor's daughter to marry the duke's son and that's going to be the way they're going to get it because what's happening here is that the duke's son is actually a nine-year-old boy and so for 10 years the emperor's daughter is going to go to the sisterhood trained to be one of them and then when she gets back he will be of age which is great news if you're watching and you're weirded out by it of course of course but while all this is going on a soldier from arrakis returns and says i am the sole survivor and it is not what you think it's not what you think. We weren't, we weren't taken out by the Fremen. We were taken out by one of your own emperor. There's a conspiracy at play here. This is what he tells him. And while this is going on, Kasha, the confidant and truthsayer to the emperor, believes him and says he's telling the truth. She says he is telling the truth. He is being honest with you for all I can tell. But there's something weird at play here, and she's not fully believing what she, I think she's even saying at this point because there's a moment where they have... You know, we see his eyes and, and things are going weird here. And you're like, what is going on? I don't know exactly what's going on. Later on, she has a dream. And I'll never see pomegranates the same ever again. There's like wormy things in the pomegranates. And uh, it's not, it wasn't pleasant. But she has a dream and she goes, actually, I think, I think the plan's going to backfire. 
I think the sisterhood plan is going to backfire. So she goes back to the sisterhood and says, I think your plan is going to backfire. And they say, you are crazy, girl. You sit down, you stay the night, you're fine. Our plan is in motion. We can't fail. But of course it does fail because the soldier ends up killing the nine-year-old boy. While this is happening, we see the emperor watching footage of him summoning a sandworm, which is totally wild. And then outside, we see the soldier and the boy, and he says, your death won't be in vain because there's all this big plan going on. And all of a sudden, the boy just starts being burnt alive. Oh, no. From nothing, from the soldier's mind. And while that's happening, Kasha is at the sisterhood, and she's getting burnt alive. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. You see Valia, and Valia, is Valia upset? Or is she okay with what's going on? Like, does she see the clear path, of the direction? Like, is this all according to plan? Or has the plan been askewed like Kasha warned her about? And that's really intriguing to me. I'm like, where are we going with this? Like, what's going on? We see him summoning a sandworm, but her response wasn't, it was kind of like fear and terror. Like, she sat at the cash. It was dead, obviously. But it was almost like, okay, I see you. What's happening here? What is going on? And I thought this episode did a really good job to build up the season to see where we're going to be going, to get us going into what's going to happen. There's a lot of houses at play here. The Emperor is on thin ice. If I lose control of Arrakis, the great houses would feed me to the worm. I guess there's no ice where he is, but he's on thin ice with the other houses because if he can't control the spice, he might... He, he might not be emperor for much longer. They're not going to want him around. And he's, he's got a legacy to uphold to. His, gran his grandfather and his father were emperor, and they had no issues with this, and he can't be the first one in his bloodline to do it. His wife isn't on his side anymore. His daughter is being married off. He has an illegitimate son, and his daughter uh, does the dirty with the swords, ma swords master in a club when she's high on spice cane or, or whatever was going on. So all in all, I thought this was a great introduction to the series. I'm looking forward to see where it goes further. I know it's based a little bit on the Sisterhood novel. So yeah, I, I think it was I thought it was a fun introduction to this world. I thought it was fine. It was a little bit slow. I, my wife had a little bit of issues with the pacing. She wasn't in love with it. I thought the beginning uh, prologue was really cool with the war against the machines and all that. I would like, oh man, let's see more of that. I hope we go a little bit further back. I'm curious how they're going to play with the timelines. I know we're going to see a little bit more of the past of Valley and her sister. All the great houses are jockeying for power. That is always present. But I like the idea that they're doing. They're setting everything up for a grand epic six episodes limited series and I like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you like Dune Prophecy? I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to episode two. Let's go. Let's bring it. See you Sunday night. No one can take your power away from you unless you let them. Thanks everybody for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe. All the great houses have their own kind of fiefdoms that they lord over. They're on planets. At the center of it is the Carino family.